Right. In this lesson, we are actually going to investigate root forms of cubic functions and learn how to sketch cubic functions. By the end of the lesson, you should recall that the cubic function can have one, two or three roots. Then you should recognize the form of cubic function with one, two or three roots. You should be able to identify the critical features of a cubic function and finally, be able to sketch a cubic function. Now, we talk about the general form of a cubic function, which is y equals to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. a, which is the coefficient of x cubed, is actually called the leading coefficient. And d, which is not associated with any x or x cubed or x squared, is the y-intercept. That is when x equals to 0. All right. Yesterday, I actually asked you to sketch y equals x cubed and y equals minus x cubed. Actually, not sketch. To plot it using your class pad. You can see that when you've got y equals x cubed and y equals negative x cubed, they all go through the point of origin O, O. All right? And we also learned that for y equals x cubed, the behavior of the curve is as x approach positive infinity, y approach positive infinity as well. And as x approach negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity as well. Whereas it is slightly different for y equals minus x cubed. As x approach negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. So there's a difference between y equals x cubed and y equals minus x cubed. Now, the thing is, here we know that the coefficient of x cubed is plus 1. And the coefficient of x cubed here is minus 1. And these are associated with the shape or the nature of the cube. We call this one positive cubic and this one negative cubic. So anything that's got a positive a is a positive cubic shape and it generally looks like this. And for negative cubic, it actually looks like this. Now, let's have a look at the intercepts. First, the y-intercept. We know that for all cubic functions, there is only y, one y-axis intercept. Whereas for x axis intercept or x intercepts, or we call the roots, you could have a situation where there's one, two roots, or three roots. All right? We will learn how to identify the roots, and we will learn how to um, sketch the graph. All right, let's go to the next slide. We also learn the point of inflection. The point of inflection is where the cubic changes from concave down to concave up, or from concave up to concave down. All right? So at this point, what you need to do is you need to use your class pad to determine your point of inflection. And for the horizontal point of inflection, which is the case of y equals to x cubed or y equals to minus x cubed. The point of inflection is called the horizontal point of inflection because it is horizontal at the point of inflection. So here, for this case, the point of inflection is the origin, which is 0, 0. Right. 
Now, I want you to use your class bed to plot these five cubics. Pause the video for a while, plot the five cubics, and then compare your answer to mine. This is what I've plotted. Now, what I want to, you to observe is the effect of the coefficient. All right? With the coefficient greater than 1, the cubic is actually closer to y-axis. And when it is less than 1 but greater than 0, the cubic is actually further away from the y-axis. Using your class pad again, this time, I want you to plot y equals to minus x cubed, and so on and so forth. Again, pause the video. Check the answer when you think your graph is ready. This is what I plotted. Now, with the negative sign in front, the shape now looks like this, which is negative cubic. And you actually can see that the effect of the 2 and 5 brings the curve closer to y-axis. And if it is minus half and minus 1.5, it is further away from the y-axis. Next, I want to use your class pad to plot y equals x cubed again. Then y equals x cubed plus 3 and y equals x cubed minus 5. This time, your graph should look something like this. You can see that the plus 3 and minus 5 actually translates the graph of y equals x cubed up and down. So if it is plus 3, the graph is translated up by 3. Minus 5, translated down by minus 5. All right? So here, the plus and minus is a dilation of the um, y equals x cubed. Uh, sorry, not dilation. It's a translation of the y equals x cubed up and down. Now, let's use your class pad again. This time, I want you to have a look at the effect of plus 3 and minus 5, um, all cubed. Once you have done, this is my answer. You can see that the effect of plus 3, y equals to x plus 3 all cubed, shifted the curve to the left by 3. So, for plus 3, shift it to the left. And for minus 5, you've shifted the curve by plus 5 to the right. Recall, this is the same as what we did for quadratic function. Now, we can s investigate the effect of the translation, horizontal, horizontal and vertical translation. This time, I want you to use your class pad to plot y equals to x plus 3 cubed, all cubed plus 2, and y equals x minus 5, all cubed minus 2. This is what I've got. So basically, the plus 3 and plus 2 Plus 3 means I have actually shifted this by 3 to the left and then up plus 2. Same with uh, the green line. I've shifted by plus 5 and down by minus 2. 
So you can see that the point of inflection here, OO, has been shifted out by shift I uh, shifted to the left by minus three and up by two. So here the point of inflection for this red line now is minus three plus two. The point of inflection for the green line now is five minus two. Alright? So this by adding a number to x all cube and then add another constant means that it's vertical or horizontal translation of y equals x cube. So now let's have a look at the general the root form. One of the root forms of y equals ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d. So here, if we have y equals a, x plus or minus h to the power of 3 plus or minus k. It's actually a translation of y equals x cubed. And dilation actually. a is the dilation of y equals x cubed, closer or further away from the y-axis. And translation, you actually either translate it horizontally or vertically. Now, the sign of A determine the nature of the graph. If it is positive, it is a positive cubic. If it is negative, the shape should be negative cubic. K is the vertical translation. Plus is moving up. Negative is moving down. And H is the horizontal translation. For X plus H should be cubed, not square. You shift the basic parabola to the left. x minus h cubed, shift the basic parabola to the right. And remember, there is only one root in this case. The point of inflection is a horizontal one, and the coordinate is this. Now, let's use your class pad to sketch or plot this graph. And I've actually shown you what I've done. Pause the video for a while, do it first and check your answer against mine. Here is another root form of a cubic. What you have now is you've got in terms of a quadratic is a cube is a perfect square and another binomial term, a bracket with two terms. Alright? So here if you've got x plus two all square and x minus 1, you know that from quadratic function, when we solve for the roots, we know that x plus 2 square and x minus 1 equals 0. And therefore, x plus 2 square equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x equals to minus 2 or x equals to plus 1. So this is reflected in the blue curve. So you've got the root here, which is first the minus 2, 0, and then 1, 0. Alright? So the effect of actually having A in front of the bracket is actually narrowing the cubic and minus in front means you've got a negative cubic shape and this is a positive cubic shape all right let's have a look at the other form of cubic which is y equals a x plus or minus m all square and x plus or minus n so again, the sign of A determines the nature of the graph. Positive is positive cubic. Negative is negative cubic. Here, there are two roots. The roots or the x-intercepts are minus or plus m, 0. That's associated with the square. And remember, this touches the x-axis. And then the next one is 
minus of plus n, and this actually cuts the x-axis. Again, you need to use your class pad to determine the point of inflection when it is required. Now, next one, let's do a different one. This time, you've got three uh, products. So you've got x plus 1, uh, x plus 2, times x minus 1, times x minus 5. Again, using your knowledge of quadratic, you know that you can solve for quadratic um, cubic equation this time equals to zero when um, when the line or the curve crosses the x-intercept. Therefore, x equals to minus two, x equals to plus one, or x equals to plus five. So the three points are here: five, zero, one, zero, and minus 2, 0. So here, with this equation, you can determine the three, the three um, roots, and you should know that this is a positive cubic, positive cubic, because the coefficient is positive, and then this is a negative cubic. The coefficient is minus 3. The other thing you could... Uh, work out is the uh, y-intercept, which means you can substitute x equals to 0 and then determine what the y-intercept is. The 5 and the 3 is just how narrow or how wide the um, cubic is. All right. Let's look at the other form of a cubic equation. This time, it's y equals a, x plus or minus p, x plus or minus q, x plus or minus r. So again, the sign determines the nature of the graph. In this case, there are three roots. The roots, or the x-intercept, are minus plus p, q, associated with this, minus plus q0 associated with this, and minus r, minus plus r0 associated with this. Alright? To determine the point of inflection, you must use your uh, calculator at the moment. So, just a summary. The root forms of a cubic function. So this y equals to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d is the general form. Then we have the root form. With one root is ax plus or minus h cubed plus k. Two roots, which means one of the bracket is squared, and three roots, you've got three brackets. So you can determine the root from the root form. So for all the cubic functions irrespective of form, A determines the nature of the graph. You need to use your class pad to determine the point of inflection and for roots when you have the general form of a cubic function. The next lesson will be looking at solving cubic function by factorizing. Now, to sketch a cubic, you need to determine the nature of the graph. Positive cubic, which is that, or negative cubic, which is this. All right? Then, you de depending on the form of the function, you can determine if there's one, two, or three roots, and the coordinates of the root. You could determine the y-intercept by substitution, which is x equals to zero, and then determine the point of inflection using your class pad if required. If you have a grid or a graph paper, it's always good to determine one extra point or two extra points to help you sketch the graph. Right, let's sketch y equals minus 2x cubed plus 4. First, since the coefficient of 
x cubed is minus 2, we know that it's a negative cubic, which should look something like this. All right? Now, we also know that plus 4 is the y-intercept, and we can write down is 0 plus 4. Now, the other thing we can do is, if you write this in the root form, we actually know that the point of inflection is actually 0, 4, which is the same as the y-intercept. Right? Which means what you have done is you have dilated y equals to x cubed and then move it up by 4. So one point is here, 0, 4. Now we need to determine one other point to actually sketch this. So how about let's determine the x-intercept. Alright, so the x-intercept is when y equals to 0. So we know that y, 0, actually equals to minus 2x cubed plus 4. Rearranging, we have 2x cubed equals to 4. x cubed equals to 2. x therefore equals to cube root of 2. And you know that the x in the step is therefore cube root of 2 and 0. So let's do it here. Cube root of 2. All right. Now, we can actually start sketching the graph. And we know that this is a point of inflection. So it's sort of horizontal around here. Then we know one point. We can sketch this bit. The next bit, we know that for y equals to x cubed, the point of inflection is actually the rotation. It has rotational symmetry, and this is actually the pivot point. So therefore, when we sketch it, the distance from the y axis must approximately the same as for this bit must approximately be the same as that. So therefore, you know that this is y equals to minus 2x cubed plus 4. All right. Let's look at sketching y is equals to 1 quarter x minus 2 square x plus 5. You know that there are two roots and one of them actually touches the x axis and the other one cuts through the x axis. So first, let's have a look at the nature. Since this is positive, this is positive cubic. And it should look something like this. Now, for the x-intercept, it should be x equals to plus 2 or x equals to minus 5. Therefore, it's 2, 0, and minus 5, 0. Alright, that's using your knowledge. Then, let's determine the y-intercept. Y-intercept is when x equals to 0. So now, you know that y equals 1 quarter minus 2 square times 5. And that actually equals to 5. So the y-intercept is 0, 5. We can now sketch the graph. So we know the three points. The first point is 2, 0. All right. Since the 2, 0 is associated with the square, this is actually touching. And then x equals to minus 5, 0 minus 5, 0, the other x-intercept, and then the y-intercept is 0, 5. All right. We know it's a positive cubic. We don't know the turning point, except 
this one because that point here touches the x-axis so therefore it should look something like this and label it y equals to 1 quarter x minus 2 square x plus 5 right let's sketch y equals to x plus 1 2 x minus 5 6 minus x now what I would like to do in this case is actually take out the highest common factor of this first which is minus 1 and make it into x minus 6 so rewriting y is actually minus x plus 1 to x minus 5 and changing this to x minus 6 by taking the minus out so this makes life a little bit clearer we know that this is negative cubic all right then we can work out the roots we know that there are three roots first x plus 1 equals to 0 therefore x equals to minus 1 and one of the root is minus 1 0 2x minus 5 equals to 0 x therefore equals to 5 over 2 so one of the root will be 5 over 2 0 and finally the last root x minus 6 equals to 0 x therefore equals to 6 6 0 so therefore we can plot the three points the three x intercept so one of them is here minus 1 0 that is 5 over 2 so it's 2.5 0 and then finally x of 6 0 the next thing we can do is to find the y-intercept this time x equals to 0 therefore y equals to 1 and minus 5 times x minus 6 which is uh, minus 6 so therefore it becomes minus 30 and therefore the y-intercept is 0 minus 30 so let's do it let's make sure that the point is here 0 minus 30 since we actually don't know what the turning point is we cannot assume that 0 minus 30 is the turning point so when we sketch it it should look something like this and label it y equals to x plus 1 2x minus 5 6 minus x all right this is how you sketch a cubic so hopefully you should recall um, that a cubic function could have one two or three roots and you should be able to recognize the form of cubic function with one two or three roots and be able to identify the critical features of a cubic function. Sketching the cubic function is what you need to practice. Thank you for listening to the lesson.